So I'm going to spend just a few minutes uh, talking about BRCA, the germline mutations and the clinical and mechanistic issues relative to PARP inhibitors. These are my disclosures. It's important. Uh, the ones that are particularly relevant here are Tesoro, uh, Myriad, uh, and uh, certainly AstraZeneca. So I think it's a no secret that it's all about individualization as we treat epithelial ovarian cancer. And one of the easiest ways to individualize therapy is to do it based on histologic subtype. It's not enough. Histology is a relatively blunt instrument or tool in finding and determining the best way to treat ovarian cancers. It still brought us a lot of discovery. I think we recognize that high-grade serous tumors and high-grade endometrioid tumors, which represent about 85% of the patients that are enrolled on our large phase three clinical trials, are those that are most susceptible to chemotherapy. I think we also realize that mucinous tumors have a biology that recapitulates colorectal cancer, that clear cell cancer also has some similarities with renal cell carcinoma, okay? But it's the high-grade serous cancers, uh, particularly that have bracket dysfunction, but we're also here to tell you that bracket dysfunction is present across all tumor types. So histology is important, but it's not just about uh, high-grade serous tumors. So BRCA, all of you know it. I think we need to publicly thank Angelina Jolie. She has done more for the testing of BRCA among women than any of us ever could. Uh, as you know, it's a tumor suppressor gene uh, responsible for homologous recombination DNA repair. I'm going to describe to you what that means. Basically, it repairs double-stranded DNA break. In fact, you may have heard at this meeting that a surrogate marker for double-stranded uh, DNA breaks or loss of heterozygosity or what people call genetic scarring. So you'll hear us refer to that and that's what we're talking to. It's inherited in a dominant fashion, meaning that a, a, a son or daughter of an affected individual has a 50% chance of inheriting it. BRCA1 is more commonly associated with development of ovarian cancer, somewhere between 35 and 46%, but still even BRCA2 patients have a 13 to 23% risk. And again, most cancers are high-grade serous or high-grade endometrioid, as I alluded to in the prior slide, but certainly that doesn't represent the entire spectrum of BRCA-associated epithelial ovarian cancer. So there's a lot of discussion about what tests are available. Um, we're here to talk a, a great deal about Olaparib as well as other PARP inhibitors. With the current FDA-approved uh, uh, Olaparib, uh, those uh, are only FDA approved in patients who have a germline mutation and that, uh, that companion diagnostic that's FDA approved is called BRAC Analysis CDX. It's a product made by Myriad. Uh, there are other uh, certainly vendors. There are other multi-gene tests which we might talk about later depending on the discussion. And there's also a three-gene panel that's uh, particularly relevant to Ashkenazi Jewish uh, women. So one of the questions was, is what does the NCCN say about it? Well, the NCCN says that if, if you're a part of a family with a known mutation, then you should be tested. In other words, if your uh, first-degree relative has inherited a deleterious or suspected deleterious mutation, that individual should be tested. There's, it, it's pretty complicated in breast cancer, and I, I wrote it here for you, uh, that, that the personal history of breast cancer and bracket testing is dependent on the age and the type and the number of blood relatives that have it in the uh, Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. But in ovarian cancer, it's simple. You don't need to memorize anything, okay? The NCCN recommends that all women with epithelial ovarian cancer be bracket tested. And they should be tested for two reasons. Certainly, so that the family can consider risk-reducing surgery, but relevant and germane to our discussion tonight because it allows therapeutic options. And it's also prognostic, as you'll hear. Patients who have germline BRCA mutations have a higher response to chemotherapy, and they live longer. And then the final would be a male a breast cancer a survivor. So what happens here is that PARP repairs single-stranded DNA breaks, okay? And if you can't repair a single-strand DNA break, it causes a double-stranded break. And double-stranded breaks are repaired with BRCA. That's the association. Now, BRCA is not the only method that double-stranded DNA breaks are repaired. There are other methods, but it is the main method, okay? And so there's a, again, PARP repairs single-stranded DNA, which leads to double-stranded DNA. 
double-stranded DNA, one method of repair is homologous recombination repair, and that's what BRCA does. So if you have a dual hit, PARP inhibition and an inherited BRCA mutation, that dual hit leads to apoptosis and hence what we call synthetic lethality. And this has been shown many times. There was a very pivotal uh, series of papers in Nature in 2005 that shows that, that, that PARP is a huge, uh, excuse me, that BRCA dysfunction is a huge predictor of PARP apoptosis, okay? And that they are absolutely, acutely, acutely and absolutely sensitive to PARP inhibition, okay? And this was uh, a, a very remarkable discovery. Uh, I would not be surprised if this uh, leads to the award of the Nobel uh, Prize. So it can, y you can also add uh, PARP inhibitors to chemotherapy, uh, so a potentiation, if you will. Um, the difficulty, as you've seen here at this meeting, there's a, a two abstracts on that, and it's also been shown before, that when you begin to add PARP inhibitors and chemotherapy together, they also enhance toxicity, so you have to reduce the doses. So most of the research, not all, and you'll hear about ongoing research, but most of the research has been used as a single agent in patients who have inhibited homologous recombination repair, or at least deficient homologous recombination repair, the double hit in there leads to uh, synthetic lethality. So again, summary and key points, this uh, BRCA analysis CDX is the FDA approved laboratory test for the use of PARP inhibitors, Olaparib, and the mechanism of action involves targeting cells where the DNA repair pathway uh, is impaired, signaling uh, apoptosis.